So we've got our turret, we can face the mouse and we can sort of simulate firing but we don't really have any bullets yet, or we don't have any bullets at all, there's no really about it and we need to sort that before this turns into a game. So in this video we're going to look at making the bullet, making it spawn when you fire and having it move around. We might touch on the collision detection but I think that's going to be a video in its own right so we'll see how we go. So I'm going to start by drawing a bullet, take the circle tool, mine's just dead simple, just a circle. Get rid of the fill and just change the properties here so it's going to be 6 pixels by 6 pixels and it's going to have a stroke width 2. There we go, a bullet. When I've drawn it, I'm just going to quickly convert it to a symbol, call it bullet, export it for action script and my base class is going to be a sprite. Okay, so that's the the library object set up. We need to actually do the class for it now. So because I'm in CS5, I'm going to do it the, the quick way. I'm just going to right click and go to edit class and have it generate the class for me. If you're in CS3 or 4, you might want to pause now and just copy this out into a new action script file. I'm just going to update these to say sprite instead of movie clip because we're not working from a movie clip. So we've got our bullet class. Let's just save it in place. Make sure it's called bullet.as, saved in the same folder as the FLA. And then press save. So our bullet's going to need to move forward just as our ship does. So a lot of this code we can probably just steal from our ship. So let's open that class. And what we'll eventually do is make this code a bit more efficient. So instead of copying and pasting all the time, using big chunks of code over and over again, we're going to make it a bit more efficient later on. But for now, because we're not that far into making functions, we're just going to steal the, the couple of lines that move the, the ship. So I'm going to copy these two lines that move the ship the way it's facing, jump back to my bullet, and I'm going to put them into a function called update. Function update and this will be working with an enter frame event just like it does in the ship so we'll add that in and it's imported the event for me there so make sure you've got that line paste the code and what are we missing now there's this speed property that our that the ship has there that we don't yet have in the bullet so let's copy that go to the bullet put Properties go here, paste the line, and we need to set the speed in the constructor of the bullet, so we'll do speed for now equals 10, and we need the event listener <coughs> to um, update this bullet every frame, so this update function at the moment isn't being called, so we'll just hop back to the ship, find where we add the event listener, there we go, with a typo in the comment, so we can fix that. I'm just going to paste that in. So it's it's looking very similar to our ship class to begin with, which is absolutely fine. And let's just check it works. So the bullet that we've made should move forwards now. And it does, there it goes, off the screen. Uh, that's not much use to us at the moment because it's just spawning from where we've put it. So what we need to do is spawn this bullet when we fire. And at the moment, the turret handles most of, well, all of the firing. So we're going to jump into our turret class, find where we've fired the bullet from, and we're going to edit this a bit. So at the moment all it does is trace the word fired. So we're going to get rid of that, and here we need to spawn a bullet. So I'll comment that in, spawn a bullet when we fire. And we've done that before with ships again, but we did that in the main document class where we spawned a ship. And the trick was to make a variable, so I'm going to make a var, we'll call it b for bullet, and we'll make a new bullet. So that's how we dynamically create a bullet. Because we've exported it for action script, we can access it in this way. So we've made a bullet. Now that alone won't put a bullet on the screen. We need to um, add the bullet to the world. And if you remember, the keyword there was add child. 
And in this case, we want to add B because that's our bullet. And we're going to have a little problem here now. If I just test the video, and hopefully you'll see what I mean. So I'll save the class, test the video, and fire. And you can see there that the bullets are spawning. That part worked well. But the following the turret, if I move the mouse, the bullets move out in the line that we're pointing along. And that's because we're adding them to the turret here. With this add child command, we're adding them into the turret, which isn't right. We want to add them to the game. Now, lucky for us, this turret is a child of the game. So we can access the game by using the turret's parent property. So here, before the add child, I'm going to put the word parent dot add child. And let's see where that gets us. It still won't be perfect. So if I click, you can see bullets spawning and moving along the top of the screen there. And that's because we haven't positioned or rotated them. So they're just going to the default position of 0, 0, which is the top left. And their rotation is 0, so they'll move to the right by default. So what we need to do is set the position and rotation of the bullet. Position and rotation, learn to type. Set the position and the rotation of the bullet. So in this case, B dot rotation is going to match the rotation of the turret. And we're working inside the turret, so we just use the rotation property. B dot X equals X. B dot Y equals Y. Just comment this. Add the bullet to the parent object. And play oops. Play the firing animation. So hopefully now when everything's saved and we go back to it, you can see that by spawning the bullets and adding them to the, the stage, the main game, they're not going to take the rotation or the position of the turret anymore. They've got their own position relative to the main stage, which is working quite well. Now there is a slight problem in that the bullets are never being deleted. So if I stretch this, you can see that the bullets just go forever, which isn't good. Because if we shot thousands of bullets and they're not being deleted, they're eventually going to crash our computer because there's too much going on. So we need some way to detect when to remove the bullets. Now obviously they'll be removed when they hit a ship, but we're not doing that just yet. So we need to think of where else we can remove them. And to do this I'm going to jump back to the bullet class. So the bullet's going to be responsible for its own deletion in this case. So we're moving the ship, uh, moving the ship, move the bullet. And we want to delete it from the screen once it's moved far enough. So there's a few ways we could do that. We could actually track the distance it's moved and delete it after a certain distance. Or we could just remove it once it's gone off the screen. We could look at doing both of those. So let's start by deleting it once it's gone off the screen. I'm just going to give myself a bit of room here. Stick a comment. Delete the bullet when it's off screen. So thinking about it now, we know that the screen is 500 pixels wide and 500 high. So I know that if the bullet is beyond 500 pixels to the right, it's off the screen to the right. And if it's less than zero pixels, it's off to the left. So we can have one big if checking all of these things. So we start with the keyword if, open brackets, and in here we're going to have four separate little statements that are separated by a, an or. So we can say if something or something or something. And to do that, we use two vertical lines. So I'm going to say if x is less than 0, so if the, the bullet's off to the left of the screen, or two vertical lines, or x is greater than 500, so if, if it's off the right of the screen, or y is less than 0, it's gone off the top of the screen, or y is greater than 500, it's gone off the bottom of the screen. So if any of those statements are true, this if is going to happen. And what we need to do here is remove the bullet from the screen. 
So again, we're going to need to access the parent of this bullet because the, pair, the, the bullet is inside that parent object. So we need to get to the parent. But this time we're not adding a child, <coughs> we're removing it. So the keyword is just remove child, capital C again. And then in brackets, we need a reference to this bullet. And to do that, we use the keyword this. So whenever you're working inside an object and you need access to it, you use the keyword this. Hopefully that makes sense. Just make sure you rewind it and listen to it again, see it in action to ensure it's sunk into your head. Let's save it, test it, and um, attempt to see if, if I fire a bullet this way. Oh, we've got an error. Oh, I know why. Silly me. It's good to see the mistakes. Right, what we need to do is remove this event listener as well. Because once we've removed the bullet from the stage, it no longer has a parent. So even though it's still off screen, still updating itself and trying to remove, this parent no longer exists. So this is throwing an error the second and third and fourth time around. So I'm going to copy this event listener. And before I remove the child, I'm going to remove the event listener. So remove the update listener. Paste that and change add to remove. We did removing event listeners in the first set of tutorials, so make sure that you refresh your memory on those. Save that, try it again, hopefully no errors this time. Stretch the window out, fire some bullets and hope they get deleted. So you can see they've been deleted once they travel so far. That's working well. So as far as spawning bullets and firing, that's that's okay. But one thing, if we just load the game again, I can fire as fast as I can click. So there's no real um, limit to the amount of bullets you can have on the screen. And that would make any shooting game fairly simple if you could just fire at an infinite speed. So we should do something about that, really. And that's going to fall to our turret class. So I'm going to save my bullet class, make sure that's all saved. Jump to my turret, and let's have a look. So what we really need to do is regulate the, the um, time that this bullet takes to, this turret takes to reload. So it shouldn't be able to fire all the time. And what we're going to need is some sort of cooldown on the shot. So I'm going to make a property to, to track that. At the start of my turret class, I'm going to make a property here. Properties, go here. And let's say var, <clears throat> what, should, what should we call it? Shot cooldown. And we'll make it an integer. So we'll, we'll say a set number of frames between shots. And in the constructor we'll set the shot cooldown and let's say 20 frames to begin with just to check it works. So shot cooldown equals 20. Now what it might be worth doing here is having a a maximum cooldown and a current cooldown, just so we've we've got the constant um, constant maximum to fall back on. So let's re let's replace that. We'll cut that twenty, and we'll do a, a constant here instead of a variable. So we'll do const max cooldown equals twenty, and here we'll do shot cooldown equals max cooldown. So we're testing, setting it to 20. And in our turret, luckily, we've got this enter frame function that, that ticks every frame. So we can count down in that, in that function just to make sure that we're allowed to fire. So in this update function, I'm just going to reduce the shot cooldown by one. And to do that, we can do shot cooldown equals shot cooldown minus one, or we could do shot cooldown minus equals one, or we could just do shot cooldown minus minus. So I'm going to comment the first two out. 
save that and at the moment we haven't actually used it to determine if we're allowed to shoot so we need to go to the fire function now so here we are in fire and we need to check whether we're allowed to shoot so if we're allowed to shoot which needs an if so if shot cooldown is less than or equal to zero then we do everything here so I'm going to encase that all in an if just hit the auto format so if we're allowed to shoot spawn a bullet set the position add the bullet to the parent object and play the firing animation what we also need to do is reset this shot cooldown so let's put that in reset the cooldown so we do shot cooldown equals max cool down. Save that, test it, and I'm just going to go and let's click in as fast as I can. You can see that no matter how fast I click, hopefully you can hear me clicking away, it's not letting me fire as fast as it was before. That's because we've restricted it. So I think for the sake of this tutorial, there's, there's quite a lot going on there. So I want you to make sure that you understand what's going on. And uh, we'll look at doing the collision so we can actually shoot these ships in the next video. Which in itself is, is quite a big job because we need some way of referencing all these ships on the screen. Which we don't have at the moment. So we're going to look at that. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching so far.